Recently I painted this watercolor Christmas wreath and I posted it and many asked for a tutorial. So in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to paint a Christmas wreath like this one. And I'll break it down step by step for you. For this I'm going to be using Canson XL watercolor paper. This pad is 11 by 15 inches and it's 140 pound cold press watercolor paper so it's nice and sturdy. You'll also need your watercolor paints. I use watercolor tube paints and squeeze them out into my own palette and I usually use brands like Cotman or uh, paints from Hobby Lobby and you can see that I spray my palette with water before I begin just to moisten all the paints. And I'm going to pick out just a couple of round watercolor brushes for this. This is a Princeton Heritage brush and it's a size 8. And then I'm going to use a smaller Princeton Select brush. I think this is a size 4, just for smaller details. You'll also want a cloth or paper towel to blot your brush on. I'm also going to use a white gel pen to add highlights. This is a Uniball Sino pen. It's a broad tip pen. And then I'm going to use the same kind of pen just in gold and maybe add some gold details to the wreath at the end. And of course a water jar too. So I'm going to start by tracing something round onto my paper to use as the guide for the wreath. This is just a round plate and just trace it lightly with a pencil so that you can see it but it's not too dark. We're going to start the wreath by first painting these larger green leaves that you can see throughout this one here and we're going to start by painting the brown branches that the leaves are on first. So let's mix up a brown branch color. I'm using two browns for this. Um, this is like a burnt sienna and a burnt umber is the darker one. I think those are the right names. And I'm just mixing them up on my palette and adding enough water so it's a nice fluid mix. I started adding the branches but then realized that this size 8 brush is a little bit too large so I'm going to switch to my smaller brush so I can get finer lines. So you're just going to paint a small section of branch that follows that circle tracing that you made and then paint two extra branches forking off of that and then leave some space and do it again further along the wreath. So I'm going for a total of six of these branches spaced out evenly around the wreath. Now we're going to mix up a green color for those leaves and I'm adding some yellow into this green mix that I already had on my palette. I just want to mix up a nice kind of sap green color that's not too dark but not too light. I added in a little bit of yellow ochre so it wasn't too bright and yeah I think that's a pretty good leaf color. So I'm going to start painting leaves onto these branches. You can of course turn your paper so it's easier to paint the leaves going in different directions. And to paint these leaves, I'm just going to be using pretty full pressure to do two strokes in a leaf shape. And then I'll usually just fill the middle in, or you could leave it white if you preferred. And to vary the lightness of the leaves, I will sometimes dip my brush into water to lighten the color. And that way I'll have some lighter leaves and some darker. So to lighten the color on your brush, you can just dip your brush in water and then tap it onto your paper towel or cloth and then you'll have a lighter color on your brush and you can paint the next leaf. Now this color ended up being a little bit too light so I added a little bit of green back into it. So continue painting these leaves onto each branch that you painted earlier, so three on each branch, and make them kind of go in different directions. This is a loose style of watercolor, so it's far from perfect. I just kind of build out each leaf shape stroke by stroke and smoothing the edges until it looks how I want it to. And I'll speed this up just a little bit, about two times speed so it doesn't get too long. Once you're done with these leaves, you can let them dry before moving on to the next step just to make sure you don't set your hand in any wet paint. But I'm just going to move right into it. 
Okay, so the next step is to add in these dark green pine needles in the spaces between the leaves that we already painted. So we're just going to fill in those spaces with these pine branches. And I'm going to use my smaller uh, detail brush for this. And we're going to mix up a darker kind of bluer green pine branch color. So I added in some phthalo blue and then like just some green I had on my palette. And I'm adding in a little bit of red here to darken it. And then I'm just going to keep adding blue and then some hooker's green until it's a nice pine branch color that I like. To paint these pine needle branches, paint the stems coming out from the wreath and paint some light lines coming out from either side of that stem. And try to use the needles to cover up the ends of the branches of the other leaves we painted just so that they fade into the wreath and you don't notice where they end. And these can look messy and imperfect and it doesn't even matter, they still look great. I painted the needles so that they're going behind the leaf there so that I, I just kind of stopped right at the edge. Now I'm turning my paper and I noticed that I need to add another branch off to the side here just to fill in that space. So the goal with these is to fill in the empty spaces and make it look nice and full. You can make the needles go behind or in front of the leaves if you want to. And you want to avoid painting any of these branches just in straight lines sticking out from the wreath. Each line should have a sort of curve to it so it looks a little looser and freer and more natural. And once again here I'm seeing that I need to paint a third branch up in that gap. So I ended up painting each of these in like branches of three. So we painted three leaves in those sections all around and now I'm doing three pine branches in the sections all around too. And I am going to speed this up a little bit just so it doesn't get too boring to watch. Now after turning the wreath up right again, I'm noticing this little uh, space up in the top right of the wreath that's bothering me a little bit. So you can totally extend the pine needles and the branches just to fill in spaces a little bit better. And now we're going to move on to painting the berries. So in any of the extra spaces, we can add in some little branches and then paint red berries on them. So I'm just going to go back to my original branch color and maybe add a little bit more green into it. And I'm going to use my fine brush just to paint little berry branches all around the wreath. Don't want to paint too many of them, but I want the berries to be kind of balanced all around the wreath, so I'll just paint them kind of evenly spaced around, making some come out from either side of the wreath, putting them in little gaps that I see, and especially up in the top right corner where I see that gap, I especially want to make sure there's a nice good sized berry branch there. Now we can move on to painting the berries. Just use a nice bright red color for these and I also made mine just slightly darker with a little bit of blue. Just paint little circle blobs on the end of the stems and what I like to do is I'll paint a few of them in this dark concentrated color I mixed up and then I will rinse my brush slightly in water and paint more of them in a lighter concentration of that paint just to vary the color and make the berries look interesting. You can also vary the size of them that you paint. It's easy to make these berry branches look really heavy and kind of overdone, so I try not to paint too many berries on each branch. <music> Thank you. 
once you're done painting the berries, step back and check to see if the amount of red and the amount of berries is balanced throughout. I'm just going to add a couple small extra ones here and there. You can see that there are still several gaps throughout the wreath and we're going to fill those in with these last light filler leaves. So I'm going to show you how to paint those next. We want the color to be light so I'm adding in a yellower green to this green mix that I already have in here. Mixing it all together and then adding plenty of water so it's a nice light color. And then we're just going to paint these simple stems in the gaps that we see. So I just paint a stem and then add lines coming out from either side of it with a slight amount of pressure. So it's kind of just like painting the pine needles just a little bit more sparse. And the nice thing about the light color is that you can just kind of fade it into the rest of the wreath. Anywhere where I see too much white space, like even behind the leaves here, I'll just paint hints of these behind there. Anywhere where I see there's a gap that needs to be filled, I want this wreath to look nice and full, and this is that last touch that helps fill in all of those gaps. And I'm also adding them kind of coming down into the middle of the wreath. And once again, I want the edges of the wreath to look natural and not perfect, so adding in these little light filler leaves also helps with that. There's this spot on the lower left side of the wreath that looks a little bit too sparse compared to the other side, so I'm going to add more of them over there. Alright, now the wreath is technically finished, but I'm going to use a white gel pen now just to add some highlights to the berries. And here's a close-up so you can see better what I'm doing. Just a little white mark on one side of the berries that follows their round shape and it just adds a little bit of interest and makes them stand out. So now you can see our wreath basically looks just like the first one I painted. I think the second one actually looks more full than the first one, but this time I'm also going to use a gold gel pen to add some gold details. So I think I'm just going to add some dots around the wreath and maybe like some gold lines to add a little bit of shiny detail. I really like doing that. So I'm just adding a little bit of gold over these branches and you can see how that looks in the light. What I ended up doing was just adding a scattering of dots here and there, just a few, and then tracing over the brown branches that I painted earlier, just to add gold somewhere. Because you mostly only see it when you turn it to the light, so it's not too noticeable otherwise. Okay, so there's the finished wreath. Turn it to the light and hopefully you can see that shine. I'm pretty happy with how this second one looks. Thanks so much for painting it with me and I hope you had fun.